Welcome back to Tao of Twine. I'm Dave. People ask me very often, and I'm paraphrasing here because so many people express these feelings uh, and questions about their own playing and, and kind of what we're doing in lessons. And, you know, like, you know, it, 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 it's hard to kind of grapple with some of these concepts because they're abstract. But one of the things that I hear very often is, how can I be more melodic? Right? How can I take this material? Because I'm, I'm learning these scales, the stuff you're showing me. I'm practicing those arpeggios. I'm doing work over here, right? When's it going to pay off? Because when I go to play with a backing track or sit in with somebody or something, it, it sounds like, it feels like I'm just playing what I practiced, you know? So how do we get that into, like, really using it to be creative in an improvisation? Great, great question. Um, the thing that jumped out at me about this recently was somebody said the exact phrase, it feels like I'm just playing what I practice. Yes, that's what we are all going to end up playing what we practice, right? Because that's what practice does. It makes us repeat things. Okay, so that really caught my attention. And um, that means that we want to always be practicing with a musical intention, right? If we just practice with some kind of like other part of our brain, we're just some kind of just purely rote thing, you know, that's what's going to happen when we go to improvise something, right? Um, so if some of it's semantic, yeah, right. This isn't a, a real important argument or anything, right? It's just that distinction. But if that makes sense to you, all we have to do is just set our intention every time. We put a little sign of, in our practice area on our screen or whatever. Every note matters. Make it count, right? It's not, you know, I'm, I'm going to do all this and someday I'll use it to do something cool. No. It, it's, 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 it's all day, all the time. So we're going to use the C major scale to learn this. Um, pretty cool um, sounding uh, pattern of thirds and how to kind of ascend and descend in thirds in a way that really almost instantly creates a melodic movement that's that's very useful and hopefully sounds and feels good to you and is different than just kind of some of the more rote stuff. Um, but it is a pattern. I've got it written out for you. Um, but so warm up on the C major scale. I'm not using a backing track or anything today. I threw in a little C major pentatonic, right? So nothing fancy there. But it's also not just like, oh, I know the C major scale. I got that. Ding, 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 ding. Yeah, okay. We, yeah, we got that, you know. Um, so right when you start playing that to warm up, get your ear acclimated, it's music, right? So I put in a little arpeggio there. No, I haven't, wait a minute. Now I'm not going to take the time to stop and start learning arpeggios today. That's not on my list of stuff to do. It's not going to take that much time out of your guitar day to, you know, play that triad or kind of work on that. Root, third, fifth. And that's the major seven because we're using a major uh, a scale. So see, you get in the habit of people say to me, like, even when you guys, some of you guys on YouTube and stuff are demonstrating a scale or something, like it sounds, it's, it's, it already sounds melodic. It already sounds like you're playing something, right? It's because most, most of the time we'd, we wouldn't just say, we're going to play a C major scale and go. We, we would if it were at a certain level, if we were, somebody was learning that for the first time. But for most of the stuff that we do with these improvisational uh, lessons and, and Dao of Twang videos and, you know, you all are kind of intermediate players and advanced players. Some of you, you know, um, it's, it, 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 it's on all the time, right? Put a little 
finish it off with a little move or something, right? Now, that's my rant for today. Don't worry, it's over. Um, let's get into this pattern. And I like this thing. I've got it written out. I want to make sure I'm showing you exactly what I'm going to put. I'm going to embed in this video later. So I've got it sitting right here. Now, um, there's, so there's a lot of patterns, you know, that, that use different intervals and things, whatever. One of the kind of real common ones is for, for thirds is if we start on that root of C, go up a third. So that's to the E then up one degree to the next scale tone from where you started and play a, 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 a third, you know, and it'll be major or minor, the, 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 the distance of the interval, depending on where it is in that key and in that scale, right? It's the same seven notes through the whole thing. So, and you kind of can just, your ear can acclimate to that really quick. lot of you probably done something like that and that's a good that's a nice thing that that's that note skipping and kind of dropping back and then back up and makes a nice direction change and that's a really good one I didn't write that down because it's kind of more common and um, um, but it still be a nice one to, to, to put into your practice so let's say go back to that warm-up thing didn't do the whole thing just one way but I put a couple of those in there and then mixed it in with I did a little arpeggio and I did a little work up and down the scale you know so this is how you kind of coax your practicing into you know something that's really kind of be musical you add some dynamics to that and maybe you you hesitate right you, you, you it starts to take shape. It starts to become something. You have an, an intrinsic feeling of that I'm, play, I'm playing something. I'm not just practicing this stuff that's aggravating and so forth. Now, this next pattern, um, I've got a few things written out here. I'm going to have to make some of this a little bit concise, but in the PDF, I'll have, you know, several, uh, a, a couple of pages worth of this stuff. So, in this one, we're going to start again with a um, uh, uh, a third interval from the root going up. So that will be the note E. Talk about arpeggios. Okay, that third, it, that, that that first note in your uh, um, uh, second note in your arpeggio will be that third. Now, in this pattern, once we do that, we go up one scale degree from there, then down a third, okay, now that's a little different, and I'm going to show you here in a few minutes with some kind of nice, oh, I don't know, coincidental or sort of serendipitous <laughs> things about how this moves in a linear way, too, along with this kind of you know, position or column approach. But I did write this one out like this. Let me see where I switched over to. Um... That's that line right there. Hopefully I can fit that. I don't have it in the embedded in the video yet. But hopefully I can fit that whole thing in there without covering up half the screen. Um, so that's, you know, and for some of you, that's going to take a little bit of that. Here's a perfect example of how we're going to practice that. And at first it is just going to be this kind of really mechanic. I'm just trying to get the pattern down, right? But right away, start putting a little swing. Once you get it going, um, right, get it, it's, you know, and then, you know, just like we did in the other example, you get to where you're kind of warming up with that scale and using a couple of positions. Then we start to put a couple of sequences, uh, little portions of that sequence in, and then go back to our scale work and stuff. And now you're really, you're really doing it. You're composing in real time a melodic 
uh, approach to soloing and, impro and in improvisation. Now, um, this next line, I just put a, and this is, this is kind of along the same lines of that way of thinking, is, is you know, diversify. So I, let's say after I get up, we get up to the top of that, um, uh, what's the last... Then let's say we did something like a C major seven, uh, well, yeah, C, but when it come down to that, it, 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 that's the major seven note, that B natural. Let's say we went. That's just an example of like, I played a little arpeggio, then I kind of moved it down into a um, C major pentatonic lick. Right? Go ahead and diversify your stuff right away. Don't just play patterns for 30 minutes straight. You'll go crazy, right? And then you won't want to do it. <laughs> and then you'll get on with me, you know, next week and be like, ah, man, I don't know. That just, I don't, I didn't really, that didn't really do anything for me. <laughs> you know, right? What, which is honest. That's fine. So let's see if I can pull this off. Almost pulled it off, right? Yeah. Don't worry, just keep going. You know, if you need to start over, you know, sometimes with these patterns, you really do need to kind of go back to the beginning of them and start over because they're once you get lost, you're kind of really lost, <laughs> you know. Um, and you 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 build on that. Your ear builds on that repetition of the pattern, right? So one of the things that I think is. Um, well, real quick, let me show you this descending one. We won't have to go. We don't have to go all the way through this. But you want to practice things descending as well. So I did write this out for you. It's like a, I haven't used this one as much. All right. So I'm a little rusty on that. I'm trying to look at the tab to make sure I'm playing it in the same spot or whatever. But. that another version of a C major seven arpeggio. Okay, I'm sorry, that was a little rusty on there, but I'm, I'm kind of glancing over here while I'm doing it. Because um, I, 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 a lot of times I would move, and I'll show you right now, part of what is um, going on is I've been messing around warming up for this lesson myself um, with all these ways that it turns out that you can move through these other shapes like okay so you, some of these some of these third harmonies and double stops that you're used to already Look how they happen to work out with this. Okay, that's the same note, says. This is so useful because it allows you to change positions in sort of a linear way, right? So, um, not sort of, in a very linear way, you know, moving this way. So if you want to do kind of a climb and you get, there's a lot of nice things you can work out for yourself about like how you slide those and stuff. But look at this one. That's just harmonizing that C major scale. But look what happens. Okay, so that's C, E, up a degree to F. 
Mm-hmm. It's an octave higher than. Okay. Then remember how we went to the third. The next, the next one will be one degree above. Uh, uh, where you stopped on that first sequence, right? And so what's happening here is it's like thirds inside of thirds. It's like a third skeleton with third licks inside it. Don't worry about the fractal, you know, aspect of that or whatever. But see how this is. You're going right up the arpeggio. And you've got two shapes there. It's either or. Okay, this pattern has a lot going for it, melodically speaking. It's still just a pattern, right? But when you start to take out pieces of it and you get used to it and you can mingle it in with your other stuff, your pentatonic, uh, major pentatonic for C and the major scale, and some of the arpeggio stuff, and you start to, you know, play around with the timing of it and things, it really pays off. And so, um, you know, many of you are going to have a fair amount of work to do just getting used to this pattern. But, you know, as soon as you get a little bit of it on your fingers, start working it in there. And what I do, if I'm not producing a, a full loop type sound, uh, you know, track for a video, um, in logic or whatever, like today, um, I just have a little inline thing down here that um, I use just to practice myself or to warm up with. So it, it is what it is. I don't, I, I didn't even remember what I put on here. It just looks like I just strummed a C chord, okay? But you know, that just gives you a backdrop to kind of hear the harmonies against, right? And some of those notes that don't land on a chord tone, but they land on cool tones like the. your time. sense in me, you know, going, oh, here we go. <laughs> I'm used to clicking that off up here and uh, going off, just, you know, going on and on with it, right? That was a little example, right? There. If, you, if you were feeling that, if you were hearing that, that sounded melodic to you, you can start putting that together right away, right? Put a little time in on the memorization and then go right into playing, man. You'll see, you'll surprise yourself sometimes. Appreciate all of you. Take it easy. See you next week.